Please welcome National Catholic Prayer Breakfast board member Maureen Ferguson. I have the pleasure of introducing someone you all know well. Speaker Paul Ryan has been a regular at this and other Catholic events for years. And he was actually the keynote speaker at this very breakfast two years ago. But we've invited him back today since his retirement from public service, at least for now, is on the horizon. We wanted to honor him for his many years in Congress, during which he exemplified the very best of our Catholic tradition of public service. Speaker Ryan has served admirably with humility and has always sought to put the dignity of the human person first in government policy. On the foundational issues of the right to life and religious liberty, Speaker Ryan has both publicly and behind the scenes worked diligently for the protection of both, whether speaking at the annual March for Life or inviting the Little Sisters of the Poor to be his personal guests at the State of the Union. He has been an articulate defender of the great Catholic social teachings of solidarity and subsidiarity, and this has been reflected in his approach to policy. And he's always made a point of highlighting the beautiful contributions of Catholic charities in America in caring for the least among us. Speaker Ryan is a class act, handling criticisms with grace and civility, no matter how unwarranted they might be. As he heads back to Janesville, Wisconsin, we honor him especially for his sincerity in wanting to fulfill his most important vocation, more important even than being third in line to the presidency, that of husband to his dear wife, Jana, and father to his three teenagers. Please join me in thanking and honoring the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. Hey, everybody. Morning. Wow. Morning. Thank you. Father. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ah, morning, everybody. I got to tell you, it is, um, it is really nice to be here again. Uh, the people that I've admired and worked for for a long time are in this room. Um, I first met Maureen back in the early 1990s uh, in the pro-life cause when she was working over at National Right to Life. Uh, the Fergusons have been just a fantastic family who have been dedicated to the Catholic social teaching right here in town. I see so many warm faces and friends. I just want to thank you for doing what you do and for this excellent journey. You know, there's a, uh, there's a psalm that I like a lot. It's the 46th Psalm. Be still and know that I am God. We live our lives at such a relentless pace there's never any time to slow down, let alone be still. Think about it. But that stillness of reflection, <clears throat> of prayer, that's where we reconnect with our faith. That's where we connect with our place in the circle of humanity. Stillness is even more precious at a time when our public discourse these days has become so much more raucous than rational. The survival of the shrillest is what some people call this these days. <clears throat> well, we tend to fixate on the shrillness. But let's talk about the survival for a moment. It seems like we're always in survival mode, doesn't it? <clears throat> you turn on the TV and that's pretty much what you hear. We're trying to get through the day, if not the hour. We go through all the motions, we argue on the margins, we get so absorbed in this intrigue that frankly isn't all that intriguing. <laughs> <clears throat> There's a quote attributed to St. Augustine. God is always trying to give good things to us 
but our hands are too full to receive them. I want to spend a few minutes reflecting on some of the gifts that God is trying to give us now. Namely, what Catholic social doctrine brings to public life. I've had a lot of time to think about this. It's really beautiful. Because right now, at this time, there is a deeply serious problem that we see right now within our society. We see moral relativism becoming more and more pervasive in our culture. Identity politics and tribalism have grown on top of this. And on top of that, it is made all the more prevalent with 21st century technology. And then on top of that, there's plenty of money to be made on making all of this worse. This is a real and this is a serious problem. It's a challenge. If there was ever a time, if there was ever a place where Catholics, from the clergy to the laity, are needed, it is here and it is now helping solve this problem, addressing this challenge. <clears throat> You know, the way I see it, I think our social doctrine is the perfect antidote to what ails our culture. It begins with a vision of a free and virtuous society, not a set of policy prescriptions or even a toolkit for, for producing those prescriptions, but a vision, a vision of dignity and possibility. It's a vision that inspires us to serve the common good, to live faithfully, and to renew that hope that our founders' vision of liberty and justice for all can be achieved in our less than perfect world. As lay Catholics, there is nothing more fulfilling than living out our faith with joy, with passion, with purpose. It's why this breakfast was founded in the first place, to heed what St. John Paul II called the new evangelization, cast out to the deep, he would say. Because again, we are so often stuck in the shallow end in survival mode. Our social doctrine, it doesn't answer instant answers. It doesn't produce instant answers to easy outcomes. It gives us something far more important than that, far more animating. It gives us a way to conduct our public discourse so that a measure of wisdom is achieved through common work toward noble ends. This goes beyond just a mere call for civility. The problems we are facing are much bigger than the tone we take. Our social doctrine teaches us that democracy requires solidarity, a sense of civic friendship. We see our neighbors as partners in this common enterprise, even when we disagree, actually, especially when we disagree. That friendship is the foundation for a mature civic patriotism, where we live our freedom for the common good, not just our personal gain. It's a patriotism grounded in respect for the inherent dignity and inalienable value of every person. This is what we all know. We believe every person has a role and a voice in the community of concern and protection. No one is written off. That's what's so beautiful about this doctrine. The good news, the great news, is that there are evangelizers living out this doctrine all around us. Maureen mentioned it a second ago. One of them is a woman named Heather Reynolds. Heather runs Catholic Charities of Fort Worth. For years, I'd been hearing about this particular Catholic Charities in Fort Worth. I've been reading. We had them come up and testify. Last month, I finally had a chance to go down and see it for myself firsthand. We sat down with some of their clients and their caseworkers. That's how they do things. Case management, a customized approach, helping the specific person with their specific issues. One guy, his name was Chris. He grew up in a really big family, and he watched all of his older siblings get into all kinds of trouble. His fate was the farm or the oil field, as he said it. That was it. No way out. It is not what he wanted for himself. One day, he told his wife he wanted to go to nursing school and become a nurse. So he reached out to Catholic Charities. They helped him navigate the system. They helped him figure out how to make it work. Even after he graduated, they're still there for him and his family. What stands out for Chris is not any one thing that they did to help him, it is, as he said, the feeling that you have an out, that you don't have to settle, that you can actually reach that horizon. 
What they did was they got him to where he wanted to go in life to reach and see his potential, and his family and himself are all the better for it. To me, that is the great manifestation of the social magisterium. It's that sense of self-worth and meaning we can receive only from the institutions that are closest to us. People and problems are not treated as abstractions. The work is done eye to eye, soul to soul, person to person. That capacity to flourish, that capacity to falter, that is at the very heart of subsidiarity. This is not a word I throw around at press conferences every day. <laughs> but it's a word I can use with this audience, subsidiarity. It is a beautiful principle. It's a beautiful principle, especially when conjoined with its rightful partner, solidarity. Catholic social teaching tells us that our public moral culture, the foundation of our political culture, is shaped by these natural institutions and these free associations of civil society. It cautions us against allowing the state too great a reach into civil society. Otherwise, guess what? We risk stifling what de Tocqueville found so admirable in this young republic. Those instincts of free association, of philanthropy, of volunteerism. We need these mediating institutions in our lives. We need them to be healthy. We need them to be vibrant. They're not just a pause from the noise or a refuge from the ugliness. They are a critical part of the antidote to what is ailing our society. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, has called all Catholics to be healers of the walking wounded. We should welcome that reminder, for it brings us back to what Catholics in this country have done for generations. We should all insist that public policy at every level permits Catholic institutions the maximum freedom to serve the poor, to serve the elderly, to serve children yearning for foster families, women in crisis pregnancies, families torn apart by the opioid epidemic, all those who look to the church for the help that they need to live their lives of purpose. We should all insist on at least that. <clears throat> Mother Teresa, now Saint Teresa, once said this, God has not called me to be successful. He's called me to be faithful. The journey is the thing. It always has been. We obsess so much about how things look. Everything in politics is about optics. That is a word I assure you I will not be missing. <laughs> Think of the good we could do if we spent just a little more time looking inward, pondering how we are all imperfect, how we are all fallen. Everything flows from that common humanity, from that stillness. Let's recommit ourselves to living not just successful lives, but faithful lives that the grace of God makes possible for each and every one of us. Let's recapture these beautiful, unifying principles of Catholic social teaching. That's how we can give America a new birth of freedom rightly understood. That's how we can sustain these institutions of self-governance. That's how we can transform this public debate, which needs to be transformed. At this moment, with the challenges before us, I see tremendous opportunity for Catholics to lead, to help bring our culture and our country closer to that great moral potential that we have. We are uniquely suited to this task. We're a big church with lots of different views, exercising our prudential judgment within the confines of our beautiful social magisterium, within these beautiful principles. It's a perfect example for how we can wrestle with all the questions plaguing us in public life. We are uniquely suited from this task, from the clergy to the laity, and we all have got to step up. We all have to be willing to cast out to the deep. Now, I don't know what's in store for me next, but I promise you this. I'm going to continue thinking about, talking about these things. Whether it's just a parishioner in Janesville, Wisconsin at Coffee and Donuts after Mass, I will be there. <laughs> I just wanted to say this is one of the things that I've thought about a great deal. I've seen it living out by having this opportunity 
to be involved in public life and public policy, to tour the country, to see the great works that our church has done all around. It's a beautiful story that needs to be retold and retold, and it's a unique time for all of us to step up and bring those healing cultural antidotes to a culture and a country that is so sorely in need of these things. Thank you for listening to me this morning. I pray the peace of Christ be with you, with your families, and with this nation that we all love, always. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Father. Please welcome to the stage National Catholic Prayer Breakfast Board Member Jacqueline Halbig von Schlesinger.